Hello, my name is Mark Horrigan. I'm a principal scientist in the program oversight department at Sekisui Xenotech. Basically, my role is a study director for drug metabolism and metabolite characterization studies. I'm going to go through some frequently asked questions that we often get relative to our metabolite characterization studies. I hope you find this helpful. Here's a quick overview. I'm uh, going to talk about just in general the role of metabolite identification in drug development. Certain definitions, uh, what are regulatory expectations, in vitro test systems, in vivo studies, what do you do with radio labeled versus cold test articles, can I get quantitative information, and how do we interpret the results? So as a general introduction, metabolites and safety testing is something that uh, the FDA is very uh, eager to, um, to have nailed down as much as possible, and they encourage the identification of differences in drug metabolism between animals used in the non-clinical safety assessments and humans as early as possible in development. So as you're in the early stage of development, in vitro studies are really helpful and critical to help you answer the questions of how many metabolites are formed, what are they, and are they human-specific or disproportionately higher in human than any of the tox species that you're going to evaluate. Uh, as Generally understood, metabolite profiles can vary across species, qualitatively and quantitatively. We'll talk a little bit about that throughout the next few slides. And uh, the concern for metabolites is uh, they can be pharmacologically active or chemically reactive. So we want to know as much information about them as we can. So this is a key piece of information that you need as you move forward with your drug development. And we are here to help you with that. A few definitions just to get started. Um, often the question comes up, is it metabolite profiling? Is it metabolite characterization? Metabolite identification? What should I call it? Generally accepted concepts are profiling refers to how many metabolites are formed in each species or test system. The example chromatogram here shows monkey hepatocytes and human hepatocytes with a parent drug and two metabolites. The profiles between the two, as you can see, are pretty similar. That's a profile. In terms of characterization, it's generally understood that this is the determination of the molecular weight and elemental composition of a metabolite. This is typically done by mass spec techniques. Uh, we use LCMS MS analysis at Sekisui Xenotech. And the example here is a metabolite or a parent drug on the left uh, is converted to a metabolite where the addition of oxygen has been incorporated into the phenolic ring. Coming back to the chromatogram that we showed earlier, in terms of characterization, now metabolite 1 and metabolite 2 have a little more definition. We can now say that metabolite 1 is a glucuronide and metabolite 2 is a sulfate. Identification is generally understood as a definitive structural assignment, um, and this is typically accomplished by an exact match when comparing the retention time and mass spec fragmentation with an authentic reference standard or by NMR analysis, which will give you a definitive chemical structure. The example here is specifically showing the location of the hydroxyl group on the ring, as opposed to the prior slide where we were generally localizing it in the ring. For purposes of this presentation and for an understanding of our capabilities, Sekisui Xenotech studies are performed as metabolite characterization. If you have reference standards to provide to us, we will use them to confirm and, and identify the metabolites, but if not, they will be considered as uh, metabolites have been characterized. Common question that we get is, can I run my study as a GLP compliance study? And the answer there is no. GLP compliance is not required or applicable for in vitro drug metabolism studies. Uh, having said that though, Sekisui Xenotech metabolite characterization studies are performed in accordance with our SOPs, which are based on the standards of record keeping that are outlined in the FDA guidance documents, particularly part 58 of 21 CFR. Anywhere you see the abbreviation SXT in this presentation, it refers to Sekisui Xenotech. Which in vitro test system is best for my metabolite characterization study? Cryopreserved hepatocytes are most commonly used test system. They're kind of the gold standard in terms of uh, having the most uh, intact functional categories of metabolism and biotransformation, which would be hydrolysis, reduction, oxidation, and conjugation. Other options to consider are microsomes or S9. Uh, those subcellular fractions need appropriate cofactors and we can design your study as we need to uh, as applicable there. And we can also perform these with uh, plated cryopreserved hepatocytes. 
We frequently get questions about performing metabolite characterization study of in vivo samples, and we most certainly can do that. We routinely perform these type of studies from preclinical and clinical studies using cold and radio labeled test articles. Typical matrices that we work with are plasma, urine, fecal homogenate, uh, various tissue homogenates as needed, and again, we work with uh, carbon-14 and tritium radio-labeled test articles. This is the big question that we get most frequently, and will I, will I get quantitative information about the metabolites detected in my study? The, the answer here is no, unless it's a radio-labeled study. The radio-labeled study is going to provide quantitative information for each metabolite that's formed. The caveat there is that the radio-labeled needs to be labeled in a good location that's going to minimize that risk of losing the radioactive portion and not being able to track where the radioactivity is gone. Kind of a uh, continuation of that discussion is relative to the mass spectral data, uh, which are not reliably quantitative due to inherent differences in ionization efficiency between the test article and the metabolites. I have an example here where we look at three structural isomers, ortho, meta, and para hydroxylations on a phenyl group. You can see in the table below, they do not ionize equally, even though they're relatively close structurally related compounds. The ortho and para peak heights are similar. The meta is quite a bit different, essentially double the other two. One way to work around this challenge is by looking at UV response. And it's not as definitive as radiometric detection, but it's kind of a good middle ground and can be more representative of relative abundance than the mass spec signal. Again, here we have to assume that the metabolite chromophore is not substantially altered relative to the parent. So if you look at the UV peak heights, those are all closely related uh, in these three related isomers. So that kind of gives you a general idea of how we make use of the UV and mass spec data in our studies. So my test article isn't radio labeled. Can I still run a metabolite characterization study? Yes. Usually we're looking at low molecular weight test articles, less than a thousand molecular weight. Uh, we do LCMS, MS techniques with inline UV detection. I encourage you to take a look around our website. You will find details about our analytical capabilities there. So what can be concluded from my study? At the end of the day, we've, we've uh, incubated your samples or prepared your um, in vivo samples, and we've done the analysis, and now what, what type of information are you going to get back? You're going to know how many metabolites were detected in each species or each matrix. We're going to provide the proposed biotransformations that led to their formation. The, the key information that most people are looking for is, are there any human-specific or uh, disproportionately higher level metabolites in human than any other species? Those are two big takeaway uh, conclusions from your study. We'll provide UV peak areas for the parent and metabolites as, as uh, applicable. Oftentimes, as you can imagine, we detect more metabolites by mass spec than with UV signal. You'll get a summation of all the metabolites, um, both mass spec and UV related. We're going to propose the metabolite structures and fragmentation uh, insets are going to be in the figures that you get in your report. And coming back to sort of full circle in that relationship between sponsor and contract research organization, there's certain information that we need from you prior to starting the study. The test article structure is really key. We need this information as early on as possible. That's going to help us design the study the best way. Any known or suspected metabolite reference standards are really valuable for us. Any relevant in vitro data, metabolic stability, reaction phenotyping come to mind right away. If you don't have those data available already, those are certainly services that we can provide and encourage you to follow up either through our website or through your uh, regional account manager to find out how to, how to initiate those type of studies as well. We'd love to have some analytical information. The method, if it's available, that gives us a good general idea of starting conditions. We typically do um, test article specific method development for each study. Also, if it's an in vivo study, we need to see the uh, PK data so that we can select the appropriate time points to pool samples. I uh, hope you've found this information helpful. If you've got additional questions, please reach out either through our website or through your uh, regional account manager. Thank you very much and come back and join us.